to GLJ Specials, where we dive deeper into selected articles or present special issues. My guests today are Christian Boulanger, Academic Coordinator of Leibniz Prize Project Recht im Kontext, Naomi Kreuzfeld, Reader in Socio-Legal Studies at the University of Westminster, and Jen Hendry, an Editor-in-Chief of the German Law Journal and Associate Professor of Law and Social Justice at the University of Leeds. We'll be talking about their special issue, Socio-Legal Studies in Germany and the UK, Theory and Methods, which appeared in October 2020. What motivated you to edit this special issue on Socio-Legal Studies in Germany and the UK? Hi, Nora. Um, it's actually, it's quite interesting because we all had very different perspectives on this and it started from kind of quite a disparate place. But initially, um, I first had the idea in conversation with the other members of the editorial board of the German Law Journal. So it's really gratifying that this is a special issue that's come to fruition. One of the um, one of the important parts that we thought about about this um, special issue all the way through was that it was in fact designed to be a special issue. The workshop was um, something that fed into the ultimate project of the, the special issue. But it was it was really interesting because I first had the discussion um, at the at the editorial board meeting, as I say, and then we um, Naomi and I had a, a follow up conversation. In, uh, at the Social Legal Studies Association, and that was really the the motivation behind the idea in the first place. That standing in Berlin at this meeting, there wasn't a huge amount of discussion about Social Legal Studies or law and sociology, um, and it seemed to be an approach that was very prominent in the UK and to a certain extent lacking in. It, certainly in those conversations so I thought that it could really do with featuring so I mentioned it to Naomi who had the, the misfortune of sitting behind me at a SLSA conference session and couldn't escape um, and after that when we when we had the idea of taking it through the, the SLSA who, who began to, um, to fund the first workshop we, um, we then met up with Christian and it really rather went from there we organized the workshop in Berlin and it was uh, it was a really good day. Um, that was September two thousand and nine, uh, two thousand nineteen. So just over a year now. Um, and as I say, it was it was a goal in the first place to have the special issue. So it's nice to have it uh, nice to have it produced. So what motivated you to um, to focus on this topic of of uh, methodology? Um, I mean, socio legal studies is a huge field, um, and you chose this very very particular uh, issue. Um, why methods? Thanks for the question, Nora. Um, I guess it lies the answer lies in what you just mentioned that it's such a wide field, social legal, and that teaching social legal theory methods myself for several years. I just couldn't find an appropriate textbook or information about what it is. And I'm not quite sure that we all are in the same opinion of what it actually is. So um, we decided to take a closer look at that. And coincidentally, which was quite interesting that both um, Christian and me edited special, oh, sorry, edited volumes on social legal. So I did a, Routledge Handbook on Social Legal Theory and Methods together with my colleagues Kirsten McConaughey and um, Mark Mason and um, Christian wrote a book on Interdisziplinäre Rechtsforschung where in a nutshell we concluded that for the UK and US spheres that we looked at in our Routledge Handbook that there's such a multitude of methods and theories out there in this field of social legal studies and I think it's fair to sum up Christian's book as to say that there's not much as to methodology around in, in the German social legal sphere. And um, so you didn't actually know each other personally when we when you started. So this comparative angle, is that something that you uh, that wasn't part of your conversation in the beginning, Jen and Naomi, right? Um, I think it was always sort of burbling in the background because um, I think fundamentally the project was sort of meta-comparative. We were interested in the different 
methods and theories that were being used in the two different legal and academic cultures. So I think it was fundamentally conceptualized as being a sort of broadly comparative endeavor without it being just looking at one-to-one -one comparison of Germany and the UK. But at the same time, the, um, the contours of the discipline and the extent to which comparative legal studies and comparative social legal studies were involved within each of the uh, sub-disciplines, as it were, was, was something that we wanted to look at because we felt that, again, there is considerable variety across the, the jurisdictions. And actually, in terms of comparative legal studies, it has a little bit of a um, arguably uneasy relationship with sociolegal studies and the extent to which they overlap or interrelate or to the extent they're doing different things. And I think you'd get different arguments from different people. And we wanted to engage with that within the, within the special issue as well. Thank you for having us. I think um, this meta comparative angle is, is uh, necessary because there isn't any comparative, explicitly comparative work on the social legal uh, communities and, and their histories there yet. So we were looking at how to compare uh, these different um, trajectories in the first place. I mean, there's a lot of uh, comparative law, obviously, people talk about uh, common law versus continental civil law and so on and so forth. But uh, to look at the way socio-legal studies developed in both countries uh, is really a new uh, approach. And that was what, what interested us. Uh, GLJ Specials also looks behind the scenes a little bit. Um, and we know you've produced a fantastic special issue, but the, the next question would be, um, were there any challenges that you faced um, while compiling this special issue? What went wrong? Thank you very much, Nora. So you want to know our dirty secrets. Yeah. So I guess turning the workshop we held in Berlin, as Jen mentioned last year, into a special issue, we had <coughs> abstracts, papers, ideas of potential um, contributors that were all the different stages for us to work with. And we had to take decisions about the content of the special issue and the narrative we could create. Where we started off with was basically using the four themes that we developed for the workshop, which were around legal culture, scholarship, pedagogy and institutions. And we then looked at the developing papers and translated that into the three sections of the special issue, which are background and development, historical social legal perspectives and contemporary social legal perspectives. Working as a team, organizing authors and co-writing the introduction as well as editing the papers, plus Christian, who was the only one of the three of us editors contributing a paper for the special issue, in my opinion, work really well, um, maybe because I wasn't writing um, a paper on top of doing all the other work. But we had a clear division of labor and we also jumped in if anyone couldn't do something to support each other. So in my opinion, that level of teamwork worked really well. What I wanted to pick up on what was mentioned before by Christian and Jen is, is this sense of a meta project. So I feel that we really had this meta project developing while we were co-writing the um, introduction. So it was this project about a social legal study of social legal in two countries in many ways. So we even found ourselves discussing about what social legal meant for us and what the differences are even among us three as a as a team in our thinking about the field and <clears throat> we define ourselves as social legal scholars and how the institutional and other factors um, pose limitations and opportunities. So really interesting thoughts about career progression, where you publish, which conference you go to, what you can get funding for, what literature is commonly cited. And we kept going back and forth and discovering so many differences in even each of our experiences that we decided rather than channeling all of this in the introduction of the special issue, we're going to develop another project out of it, which we can share a bit um, may about maybe later. But I guess the challenges we faced was probably what you do when you edit a special issue. We had to meet deadlines and had to encourage our authors to meet those deadlines. 
we had to get the structure and the narrative right of all these different um, contributions. And we also had to manage people from various different um, legal pedigrees and cultures. So what would you say are the most important insights in this special issue? And maybe also what are uh, limits of, of the insights you were able to produce? I think um, the most important insight is, is a really trivial thing. I mean, it's just how different uh, the academics cultures really are. And, and that's not surprising because anytime you compare to countries or to jurisdictions or whatever, you will find out a lot of differences. Um, but also what's less studied is these academic disciplinary cultures uh, in which people work because for the law, it's usually not the case that you look at the context on how law is produced. And that's even less true for, as, as uh, Naomi said, for the social legal communities. Although it is a much more uh, reflective uh, um, context in which they work. And comparing UK and Germany is particularly interesting, I think, because there's opposites, they're on opposite sides on many levels. I mean, think of the common law system, which is very alien to, to German dogmatic lawyer. The fact that social legal studies is a well-established subject at UK universities that even allows you to pursue a career, whereas as uh, German lawyers know, a specialization in Rech Rechtssoziologie, in many cases is detrimental to your career, at least it was. It's slowly changing, I think. Uh, or the neoliberal, very open, competitive, and impact-focused academic environment in the UK. You compare this with the German academia, especially legal, which is very closed, very narrow, and precarious. But at, on the other hand, has a very high tolerance for non-purposeful research. And there's a lot of money for non-purposeful re basic research which you can tap into if you have the means and positions to do it. And once you see that things are different, you need a vocabulary to make things comparable or to give a context to this comparison. And we focused on academic cultures with uh, many enemies, uh, especially in German literature. But we think it can serve as a useful heuristic. It can I refer to observable narrative practices, institutions, and it looks uh, makes you look at history, how we got, how we got here, where where we where we come from, and stuff. And um, talking about limits, I think one main limit is that we don't have much data. I mean, we don't have comparative data that we can work with, and we don't have even. For, uh, in the UK, it's a bit better because of all the assessments that happen there. But in Germany, uh, there's really a lot of room uh, to collect data that we can use. And that's one project that we might still talk about that will produce a lot of more data than we have right now. So now that we have your special issue, what next? What challenges lie ahead and where is further research needed? Thanks, Nora, for the question. Um, I guess one thing that we came out of this project is that we haven't even started to scratch the surface and what is social legal, what is comparative, looking at different countries. So one thing that we definitely need um, to explore further is how to best engage junior and early career academics into a project of comparative social legal studies it's thinking about um, how, how can we make this field flourish and beneficial for everyone to, to learn from each other and to, to collaborate. And what to do, if we mentioned earlier about where you publish, what conferences you go to, and all of these discussions about pedagogy, but how is all of this gonna happen, especially in the time of the pandemic? So we really need to think very hard and good about how to create new spaces of making people join up and collaborate and how to wake the appetite of maybe creating some funding mechanisms of getting people to, to work together. So even for the three of us who hadn't worked together formally, it was a great experience, which we never would have managed to do if there wasn't you know, this 
this idea that generated in in Gen when we saw the SLSA funding and you know so how these serendipitous moments can happen and develop into something really fruitful and we really advocate for for more of this work that needs to be done on collaboration and integrating more more junior colleagues yeah and i think um important is also to look at the institutional landscape i mean in the uk you have the slsa that's that's uh one organization that's very active and uh, has supported the workshop in germany the landscape is a much more fragmented we have at least two different associations one is the association uh, for law and society the other one is is the uh, a subsection of the german sociological association so it's it's uh, much more complicated in germany but still i think that's what's what's just happening is that we um the the uh, connections to the uk will be strengthened we'll try to be part of this strengthening of these um uh these connections and as naomi said it's extremely important to create outreach to the young younger scholars to uh, uh to have incentives to have support for them to engage especially if as i have mentioned before uh, socio legal studies is not yet really established in germany so that's something um we want to contribute with what what we were doing and what we hopefully will be doing in the near future yeah and in 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 that sense like one of the important things that i think that we again have always uh, thought about this special issue is that it's not the end of the conversation it's right at the very beginning and we have ideas that we'd like to take forward in um, in a more cohesive um, project so this collaborative beginning I think is is really great but we wanted to to delve a little deeper earlier on Christian mentioned the lack of data and that's something that we were aware of so um, we thought that we should really give some thought to the possibility of getting some uh, uh, some proper concrete data on the differences between these different um, academic and legal cultures. But one of the other things that came through in terms of our findings was this idea of self-reflection. Um, and I'd always felt a little bit, perhaps not margin, marginalised as strong, but a little bit different in terms of the UK system because my um, socio-legal work is effectively socio-legal jurisprudence it's very theoretically minded and arguably fits better within the german model than the uk one and that in terms of my own self-reflection was something that was intriguing and we'd spoken about our own somewhat idiosyncratic backgrounds perhaps so my supervisors are both german and christians obviously um, working in a, a, a law faculty while being a political scientist and it's it's something that we were like, maybe we're slightly odd cases, and that's why we have these different perspectives. But this self-reflection idea was something that we thought would be really useful to take forward and ask people working within socio-legal studies and working within um, law and society approaches more broadly, whether they be theoretical, focusing on methodologies, comparative in their, in their um, approaches to reflect on why you've made those decisions and why you've opted to take that particular approach and the extent to which it's pedagogic, the extent to which it's institutional, the extent to which it's jurisdictional, um, and what has led you to those decisions and what has led you to those research practices that feed into the work that you're ultimately producing, because that, that idea, that heavily kind of contextualized cultural idea, we think is is something that's salient in terms of the, the the findings that we're looking for. So we'll come to the last uh, set of questions, which are about you questions, uh, highlighting the person behind the researcher. Uh, Christian, let's start with you. Um, your question is, what was the best advice you ever got? The best advice. I mean, my grandma said, "Learn languages." That was uh, that was a good advice, piece of advice. And um, then I think when I was studying with Daniel Lev at the University of Washington, 
I was thinking about truth actually and and how how science can lead to truth and he was he kind of said no it's 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 not about truth it's about questions and i i thought that was a good good answer that has guided me ever since naomi you chose the question on working what's mm -hmm. your ideal work setting oh gosh what a question at the time of of a pandemic at the moment where I'm just longing to go back into my physical workspace where I feel I'm very fortunate that I'm have a home and it's warm and all of that and I can work. So I think my ideal work setting talking from October 2020 is to have a combination of having a window where I can see some green outside it and I have a screen that's big enough where I don't have to change to my age appropriate reading glasses and always be caught in between reading and long distance glasses. And where ideally I can have an office with a door that's open where colleagues can stop by and students drop in and we can have coffee chats and lunches together, which I used to really enjoy and I dearly miss at the moment where we all are confined to our spaces. Jen, your question is my favorite of the bunch. You chose the question, movie self, who would play you in a movie? Oh, that's a good question. Who would play me in a movie? Like contemporary me, me right now, like 2020, Jen? Sure, yeah. Um, I don't know. Like, if I can rewind the clock, then I always think Glenn Close is really cool. I, I like her a lot and, and particularly that West Wing episode she's in when she's just like super cool. So like maybe a marginally younger, no offense Glenn, but a marginally younger Glenn Close, so I go with her. This was an episode of GLJ Specials. My name is Nora Markide and I'm an editor for the German Law Journal. Thank you for watching.